Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd Coons and today I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and do a tutorial. I honestly started this channel thinking I would do a lot of tutorials. I used to teach college photography and so when I started the channel I thought tutorials are where I'm going to go but I found that doing tutorials is difficult. It's, it's hard to take a, a one-sided video, explain something when it comes to photography and say it in a way that reaches a lot of people. So what I have opted to do over the years is just do my photography, inspire you guys, and do little bits of teaching here and there. But today I'm gonna go back and try to just do a full-on tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so let me be completely honest with you and tell you why I'm attempting to do a full-on tutorial today. It is because I watch on social media all these photographers that post these little 60-second reels. Here's my settings for this, and here's my settings for that. Here's how I do this. And, and number one, you can't do it in 60 seconds, especially if you're trying to reach somebody who doesn't know anything about what you're talking about. And to be honest with you, half of these little 60-second reels are wrong. They're just bad information. So misinformation, bad information, that's kind of what I'm trying to combat a little bit today. And in this case, I'm going to talk about flash photography. Specifically, we're going to talk about speed lights. If you are a photographer at all, you're going to come to a place where you're going to need a flash. If you are a wedding photographer in particular, an event photographer, you're going to have to learn to use a flash because there's just no way you're gonna get away from it. You're gonna get into a situation where the reception area is dark, it's nighttime, you're gonna have to know how to use a flash. Now, like I said, I have found that doing a tutorial is a difficult thing because you gotta make sure you say everything specifically correct, you can't misspeak, you can't mumble over your words, and you gotta say it in a way that makes sense to the person who is starting from ground zero. Maybe you agree with me that yes, you need to learn flash photography. Uh, it's something that is missing in what you do for a living and you know it's something you need to learn, but you've never done it before. You're starting from scratch. So I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible and as accurate as possible. I wanna tell you how to do it right and, and, and do it in a way that makes sense. So here's my attempt at explaining how flash photography works. If you've done flash photography for any length of time, I'm sure you've heard of the exposure triangle. Those are the three things that we have to control our exposure. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Those three things will control our basic exposures. Now when it comes to flash photography, there's only two of those things that control flash exposure. ISO and aperture. Now shutter speed will play a part in what we're doing and I'll explain that later, but when it comes to the actual exposure of the flash, what we set our ISO will make a difference and what we set our aperture at will make a difference. Now I say that to begin the whole little lesson here. Um, I think it'll make sense as we go along, but just know that those basic truths of the exposure triangle, only two of them are going to affect our flash exposure. Now what I want to talk about is speed lights. Um, however, what I'm talking about today is, yeah, I, I think it goes with all types of flash photography, but in this case I'm going to specifically talk about a speed light that goes on the top of our camera. Um, however, if you have a trigger and the light is off camera, that's it, it, all the same things are going to hold true. Um, but just keep in mind, we're just talking about a speed light that goes on top of your camera. Um, in this case, I've got the Godox V1. Uh, not sponsored by Godox by any means, um, but I really, really like this flash. Um, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they all make their own flashes. It's going to work very similar to this one. Uh, in this case, I'm a Fuji shooter, so this is the Godox V1 made for Fuji. If you're a Canon or a Nikon shooter, Sony shooter, you've got to get the Godox V1 for your model. The reason being is that uh, the flash is going to talk to your camera and it needs to know what kind of camera you're putting it on. In my case, again, I'm a Fuji shooter, so this is the Fuji version. Okay, when it comes to a speed light, there's a couple different modes that they're all gonna have, uh, at least most of them, and there is a manual mode, there is a multi-mode, and I believe the multi-mode, which is something I don't use, I think it'll flash multiple times. Um, I never use that, so I'm not gonna get into that and try to tell you about something I don't really 
use or do anything with. And the other one is TTL. Now with my Canon flashes, it said ETTL, same thing, electronic through the lens. The Godox just says TTL. That TTL stands for through the lens. I'm gonna break those down here in just a minute. Uh, but I'm going to go back to manual mode. Now, one of the things that some of these 60-second reels people will get into, and you've probably heard this too, if you want to be a professional, you've got to shoot in manual mode. Um, that is absolutely not true. Um, M does stand for manual. Manual mode meaning you control everything. Now, there's advantages to manual. There's advantages to... To through the lens. So I'm going to talk about that, but when it comes to manual mode, don't feel that you are not a professional or that you're not doing it as well as you could be if you're not on manual mode. I personally use manual mode on some things. I use TTL in other things. It depends on the kind of job that I'm shooting, and I think as I talk here, it'll make sense. Now, when you're in manual mode, you'll see that the power that it is set at is listed right here on the back. When it says 1 over 1, it is at full power. And think about it as like a pie chart. You know, you're using 1 over 1. Now, you're going to have to go to your elementary school math class when we talk about fractions because you can then change the power of the flash by reducing the power, and it's going to go into fractions. So you could go 1 over 1. That's full power. You can go down to half power, 1 over 2, and now you're using half of the power that the flash has to put out. Um, you can go down to quarter power. Now you're only using a fourth of the power that the flash has to give out. And in the case of the Godox V1, you can, let's see, you can scroll down all the way to 1 256th power of the flash. Now, different flashes will be set up different ways. Mine is actually in tenth stop increments, so I can go from full power to half power to quarter power and tenths of a stop in between. So I can very precisely dictate how much power is coming out of my flash in tenths of a stop. Now, whatever I set that power at, the flash is going to give that amount of power coming out of the flash every single time. No matter where I'm standing, no matter where the flash is at, it's going to give that same amount of power every time. So manual is fantastic when it comes to control. If I'm in a situation where I'm doing the same shot every single time, let's say for instance I'm doing headshots for a corporation and I've got my little setup, I put a light over there for the main light and I've got a light over here for the hair light, and I've got 20 people coming through and I'm going to take every one of their headshots. I want those lights to give me the same amount of flash every single time. And so manual is fantastic for that. I can dial it in where I want it, same exposure every single time. Now let me back up just a little bit. When it comes to flash photography, most flashes are going to be rated, if you will, by watt seconds. Now speed lights don't usually come in watt seconds necessarily, but if you get into the bigger strobes, you will see that they are 200, 400, 600 watt second strobes. A speed light is at about 75 watt seconds, roughly, 75, 76 watt seconds. Uh, just to give you an idea of how powerful this little light is. Um, in comparison to some of the bigger studio strobes, it's not super powerful. 75 watt seconds and then we're powering it down from there. Okay, so when it comes to TTL, which again stands for through the lens, that is the automatic mode for the flash. In other words, you're putting it in an automatic mode where you're going to let the flash do the thinking for you. I said that flash is controlled by aperture and ISO. So if I set my ISO at say 400 and I set my aperture on my camera at f4, my flash is on TTL, my flash will know at ISO 400 and f4 that it's going to put out a flash that will be an f4 exposure every single time. That's the automatic mode in it. If I stand, if it's on top of my camera and I'm five feet from my subject, it'll give enough flash to make f4. If I back up to 15 feet, it'll put out enough flash to be f4. Now the farther I am away, the more light it's got to put out to give me f4, but the flash is smart enough to know 
The distance has changed. And what it means when it says through the lens, it calculates that through the lens of my camera, which is as accurate as you can probably get. In the old days, there used to be a little, it was called a thyristor, I believe. It had a little sensor on the flash, and it would sense it from the flash, which worked really pretty well because usually it was right above the lens of the camera, but going through the lens is even more accurate. So I think you could see that if you were in an event, say a wedding reception, and you're running around taking pictures of everybody, you might be five, six feet away from the bride and the groom dancing. You need your flash to give you a certain aperture or a certain exposure. But then you run over to the other side of the room and somebody has 10 people and they're like, hey, we're a bunch of college friends. Can you take a picture of all of us? And you've got to back up to take that picture of 10 people. You still want your flash to continually give you the same exact exposure, even though you're running and gunning and, and moving. That's where I think TTL is a fantastic tool. If you're in manual mode, you know, a certain power setting might be perfect for 10 feet, but as soon as you get 5 feet, you're now giving out too much light and overexposing your scene. So manual is a little bit harder to use when you're constantly moving around. So for a wedding reception or an event or some kind of thing where you're running and gunning very quickly and where your distance between the camera and your subject continues to change, TTL is a fantastic tool. Now let me say this about TTL, and I don't mean to get too complicated or muddy the waters if you're just starting out, but keep this in mind, something to ponder a little bit. When you set your camera at a certain aperture and you ask the flash to put out that much light, again, if my example is f4, I set my camera at f4, my flash knows to give out enough light to be a proper exposure at f4. Now what is happening is the flash is putting out enough light through the lens it's making a calculation that this is a proper exposure. And what that light is doing is thinking 18% gray. It judges every single scene as if it was 18% gray. That's how our meters work as well. It, you know, it, it's just the way it's, it's going to work. It's going to say, okay, here's the proper exposure for an 18% gray scene. Now, not every single scene is 18% gray. You know, back to the wedding reception. Let's say that it's a very white room, white walls, the floor is white, and the bride is in a big white dress, and she's standing in front of these white columns and white, white walls. And I'm using a flash with TTL. That flash is going to think 18% gray, and what ends up happening is you end up under lighting or under exposing that scene because the TTL got fooled. So just keep in mind that if you have an overly bright scene or an o it'll go on the dark side as well if you have an overly dark scene that TTL automatic mode can get fooled just keep an eye on it it's you know the the flashes and these cameras today are amazing half of them can say like oh this is a bright scene and and compensate for that but you may need to use the exposure compensation dial in a scene like that just knowing that uh, TTL can get fooled and I'll give you one little example at a wedding reception happens almost every single time, especially while they're dancing. I might be taking a picture of the bride and groom as they're dancing, but there's a bunch of people dancing around them, and somebody closer to me than the bride and groom is in a white shirt. He's taking his jacket off, he's dancing with his wife, whatever, and he kind of dances in, and he's off to the side of my frame, and that white shirt catches enough of my light. My light thinks, ooh, properly exposed, and the light shuts down too soon, he looks pretty decent, but my bride and groom is underexposed. So TTL can get fooled in a couple different ways. Scenes that are brighter than 18% gray, and then people that kind of jump in the front of your foreground. So just keep that in mind. Uh, TTL can get fooled a little bit. Uh, backlit scenes can do it as well. If you have a very bright backlit scene, uh, TTL can get fooled because it thinks it's properly exposing it when it's really not. Okay, so let's talk about shutter speed because I've already told you that shutter speed has nothing to do with flash exposure and it's true. Shutter speed doesn't control your flash exposure however shutter speed is a big deal. Obviously shutter speed does help control ambient light in the room. It doesn't control the flash exposure but it plays a rather important role when it comes to flash photography because there's a couple things that happen. Number one, all of our cameras have a sync speed 
What I mean by a flash sync speed is that is the highest shutter speed that you can use on your camera with flash photography. Let me just explain real quick what's happening. With most of our cameras, we have a focal plane shutter. It's a couple of curtains, lack of a better way to say it. When you take the picture, the first curtain opens and then the second curtain closes. Then the camera resets for the next shot. In the film days, you would crank, you know, crank the film forward and that shutter would reset itself. So the first curtain opens, second curtain shuts. As long as we are at our sync speed or lower, which for most cameras it's 250th of a second, I think Canons are 200th of a second, as long as you're at that shutter speed or slower, the first curtain opens all the way, the flash goes off, and then the second curtain shuts. If we go above our sync speed, what happens is before the first curtain is open, the second curtain is already shutting. So the entire frame of the digital, you know, the entire digital sensor is never ex open to exposure at the same time. It's opening and they're coming across together. So what ends up happening if you are shooting with flash photography above your sync speed, somewhere in the middle of that image is where your flash goes off and only a portion of the frame receives flash exposure. So if you ever see a shot where half of it's kind of dark and half of it looks good, that's what has happened. So you've got to stay at the sync speed or slower in order for the flash to render on the entire image. Now I'm not going to get into this, but uh, high speed sync does exist. You can go to higher speeds above your sync speed. And what ends up happening there is the speed light will actually kind of strobe effect, if you will. You can't see it with your naked eye. It'll look just like a normal one flash, but it's popping really quickly. And as the curtain is going across, it's boom, 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 boom. Now, I'm not a big fan of high-speed sync. There's some drawbacks to it. It really, you know, sucks a lot of power from your flash. I'm not going to get into it, but it, it does exist. But by and large, stay at your sync speed or slower, uh, and then you should be fine. Okay guys, what do you think? Did that help at all? I don't want to get too far into this thing because I don't want to make it any more complicated than it has to be. I just want to give you guys the basics of how to use a flash. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's really pretty simple. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it. I know a lot of people don't kind of dive into it because they think it's huge and complex. It can be huge and complex, we can take it there, but for the most part, the basics of flash photography are pretty simple. Now, one thing, once you kind of get the settings down and you start getting some success, you know, you can aim the light directly at your subject. You can start pointing it up. You can put a little bounce card up here and you can start modifying the quality of the light. Um, you know, just straight on is kind of like pointing a flashlight at somebody. It's not super attractive. Uh, so once you get the basics of how it works and get good exposures on a regular basis, you, then you can start playing with the, uh, the quality of the lights. So, like I said, I'm not trying to make this too more complicated than it has to be. I just want the basics, you know, to kind of put it out there. So if you got questions, comments, complaints, let me know. Um, I love hearing your comments as always, and if, you, if something I said doesn't completely make sense, leave me a comment. I will get back to you ASAP. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. I would really appreciate that. We are knocking on the door of 3,000. Uh, probably have 3,000 in the next week or so, which small milestone for a YouTuber, but big one for me. And I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video.